Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. Here are the pretty spring decorations we're working on today. I don't know where you all live, but this past couple of days we've had sunshine and it has really made me want spring so bad, so I'm doing spring DIYs. You'll need this bucket from the Dollar Tree, and if they don't have a white one, don't worry. You can get a different color one and just paint it white with gloss spray paint. Then I'm using Apple Barrel Black Paint to paint around the edge, just the top edge of this bucket, to make it look like enamel wear. This technique is something that you can use to transform almost anything. Anything can look like enamel wear. I love doing this with all kinds of containers. Once the top edge is painted black, now you're going to make it look like there are chips in the enamel. And I'm using a Sharpie paint pen to do this. And it's very random. And I promise, no matter how you do this, it's going to turn out cute. I like to do, just kind of think about where a bucket or whatever it is that I'm working on would get banged around, you know, and get its little chippy places. So the corners, the edges, definitely. And then just a couple in the middle where it might've gotten gouged in a, in a garden shed or something. Now there are all kinds of ways that you could decorate and put words or anything you wanted on this bucket, but I'm using a stamp that I got on clearance at Michael's. I've recently gotten into stamping on things and I'm loving it. So this stamp came from Michael's on clearance for a couple bucks and this is Stays On Black Ink that came from Hobby Lobby at $7.99. And this is so much fun. Oh my goodness, all the different stamps that there are out there and you can put on your uh, DIYs to personalize them or just add a, a pretty graphic like this. I'm loving it. So what you wanna do is rub the ink pad onto the stamp as opposed to putting the stamp down in the ink pad. Now, since this bucket was kind of, you know, it's Dollar Tree, it's, it's thin and wobbly, I had to place my left hand underneath in order to get the full stamp to go on. Isn't that just the neatest thing? I just am loving stamping. I hope you guys give stamping a try. Next, we need some garden tools to go in our garden bucket. And these came from Dollar Tree. They have different colors, but they have these foam handles that I thought to take off, but if you see here, there's kind of a, a cutout in the wood and I didn't, didn't want to take them off because of that. So I decided to cover them with this wood contact paper that's also from the Dollar Tree. And that could be pretty on its own, but you can still see around the edges where that purple foam is. So in real life, it's, it's not that great. So after I get this contact paper put on, then I will paint them white. And today I'm using Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint and I'm going to use painter's tape to tape off around the ends of the fake wooden handle that I've made so that the white paint just gets on where the contact paper is. So you're probably wondering why didn't I just paint the purple with the white paint? 
and that's because it's made of some kind of spongy material and I really wanted to keep that wooden handle look. And then I used two coats of the chalk paint to cover the contact paper part of the handle. These tools I'm going to say are for decoration purposes only, just to set out for pretty. I'm not sure how contact paper and paint would hold up if you were actually using these tools to dig with. That being said, after I took off the masking tape or painter's tape, I saw that I got the exact effect that I was going for. Now these look like wooden tools with white wooden handles. Then I thought it would be really cute to put some words on these handles and I'm just using a black sharpie to do that. If you wanted to use your vinyl cutter to make some words that would be perfect but I just wanted to be simple and not so complex so I just wrote some words on these handles and my writing is not the best but I still think that they turned out very cute. And here's how the garden tools turned out. Then I started thinking what else might would go in a garden bucket and I thought we needed something to put some potting soil in. So I have this jar from the Dollar Tree and I wanted everything to match, so I painted the lid white. This is some seed starter potting soil that I got at Dollar Tree. Isn't that so much cuter than just leaving it in the bag? Putting things in jars just makes stuff so stinking cute. But I'm not stopping there. I'm using these chalkboard tags that are from the Dollar Tree. They have different kinds, different sizes. Any one of them will do. But I picked this one because I thought that the size of it matched the size of my jar better. And they do come with these little pieces of jute string that you can tie with, but obviously that doesn't fit around my jar. So I had to use my own jute string. Then of course we have to write a word on the chalkboard tag. So I'm using this white marker. It's not really a chalkboard marker. It just says metallic marker on the package. And it's from the Dollar Tree, but I don't really see that it's that metallic-y, but it's white, so, and I get a better fine point for writing with it than I do with the chalk writer that's from the Dollar Tree. So, I recommend to go get this white marker if you're going to be writing on small chalkboard tags. Next, I thought it would be really cute to use a mason jar 
to put some flower seeds in and so again just like the last one I painted both pieces of the mason jar lid with the white rust-oleum chalk paint And again, this flower seed came from the Dollar Tree. They just have everything. If you don't shop at Dollar Tree, you need to give Dollar Tree a honest try because they have all sorts of things that you wouldn't even think to be in a $1 store. But anyway, here we are with some, it was a pretty box of flower seed, but oh my gosh, how much cuter in a mason jar, right? And just like with the potting soil jar, I wanted to add a chalkboard tag. This one is a different one. It's smaller because it fits the size of the mason jar better. And it came with this little clothespin on the back that I just took off. And I had some pieces of the wood back come off with it, but that's okay because it's going to be facing the back and no one will know. And this tag being even smaller than the first one, oh my gosh, what I was trying to write on here, I should have just wrote seeds. Why didn't I just write seeds? That would have been just as cute, but no, oh, I had to write wildflower <laughs> seeds or wildflower mix. These are things that you think of after the fact. So I'm gonna go back and probably change this just to seeds. Since there was no hole in this tag to tie it on with the jute string, I just used hot glue to hot glue it right to the jute string. Not to the jar, but to the jute string. And I just kept going and going with these jars. They were cute, just like they were. But you know what I love even more? Grain sack stripes. And I thought that these lids would be very cute with some grain sack stripes. And these are really easy to do. All I did was tape off one chunky stripe in the middle with the painter's tape. And I used my apple barrel black paint. <laughs> And I didn't even put it onto a paper plate like I normally would. I just put a little dollop right there and painted that stripe right on the top. Then to make the smaller, tinier stripes on the side of the fat, chunky stripe, all I did was put down a piece of the painter's tape and use my Sharpie marker just to draw a straight line. It's not as crisp and clean a line if you were to be taping it all off, but sometimes I think farmhouse style is imperfections. And I liked that these lines were not perfectly crisp. And sort of a bonus DIY here. This isn't something to go inside of the garden bucket, but look, I got this at TJ Maxx for only a dollar. And it's supposed to be grow your own Christmas tree. Um, I guess there's Christmas tree bulb inside that sack, but I 
set that aside to use for planning outside, I guess. Maybe I should try to grow my own Christmas tree, but no, I'm going to use this uh, little planter pot for a wildflower arrangement. So I took the sticky label tag off and used the Goo Gone to get rid of the residue and cleaned out the inside of the pot. There's Piper's little cameo for today. He was off watching birds and wasn't too interested in being on camera, but I put some floral foam down inside of the pot. And these are the really cute wildflowers that I got at the Dollar General store. They were only $1 a bunch. And I thought that they were so pretty. They look pretty real to me. So I cut them apart using wire cutters and arranged them in my real enamelware pot. To cover up the floral foam that was still peeking through some of the leaves, I used Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree to fill in those places. How cute this is, right? Now, I was thinking you could use a Dollar Tree mug and paint the rim black to get a very similar arrangement. And here's the garden bucket all put together and ready to set out for display looking so cute for the spring season. Hey, thanks for stopping by and watching my video today. I'm always so happy to see how many people have watched and enjoy my videos. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. And I'll see you next time. Bye.